The UK's Conservative Party has chosen Liz Truss to replace Boris Johnson as Prime Minister. Queen Elizabeth II will formally appoint her tomorrow in Scotland. Truss will be the third woman to serve as Prime Minister. CBS News senior foreign correspondent Charlie Daggett is following this story for us from London. So tell us, Charlie, who is Liz Truss? What do we know about who, her politics? Who is Liz Truss? Liz Truss is a 47-year-old woman, mother of two. Uh, she has been uh, in the government for 10 years. She's been a cabinet minister for eight. Sorry, been in the government for 12 years, been a cabinet minister for eight. She is or was the former foreign uh, secretary. Uh, she is conservative with the capital C, conservative uh, with the small c. Uh, models her policies very much on Margaret Thatcher, although she has denied that. Uh, but in terms of sort of free trade, low taxation, small government, uh, a tough stance with the EU post-Brexit. She has been the point man for that, or point person, I should say, for that. Um, so uh, anybody in Brussels who had a tough time with Foreign Secretary Liz Truss is going to have a difficult time with Prime Minister uh, Liz Truss. Uh, her policies, I mean, she refused to, to badmouth Boris Johnson, the outgoing Prime Minister Boris Johnson, uh, and one of the few senior cabinet ministers not to resign. And that may help her out because there are deep divisions within the Conservative Party that that will be the priority, first of all, to get those divisions healed. Uh, and there are some within the Conservative Party uh, who have just outwardly spoken that they weren't entirely happy that Boris Johnson was made to walk the plank the way he did anyway. So that loyalty may help her in trying to put the Conservative Party back together. No doubt Charlie Truss is walking into a very difficult economic climate in the U.K., so what has she proposed to kind of get things back on track? Well, difficult to say the least. They are looking at, we are looking at double-digit inflation. We are looking at utility bills that are going to increase by 80 percent, 80 percent uh, over the winter and the spring. Uh, there's a price cap on that. She said she's going to have an emergency budget right away. She's going to hit the ground running because everybody here is screaming about the cost of living, and which has just skyrocketed. So the economy is plummeting. The cost of everything has gone up for any number of reasons. The war in Ukraine, fuel costs, gas prices, both natural gas and gas as you and I uh, know it. And that, of course, has had a knock-on effect um, for anything that you want to buy at the store. So all of the, the food prices have gone up, uh, goods have gone up, and at the same time, and this is the double whammy, the value of the pound has gone down. So the pound buys less outside the UK. So there's a whole whirlwind of trouble that is coming up in the next few weeks months, an emergency budget she's going to set out right away. Job number one is to get, first of all, to build a government. You know, she's going to assign these government ministers in a, a, a deeply divided conservative party. We're now running the country. And then job two is trying to do something about this economy and trying to get some confidence among voters. And of course, Boris Johnson's ouster really left the government in tatters, if you will. How is she going to lead her party? And, and really tell us what might change under her, her government. Well, I, in terms of what may change, people know who Liz Truss is. And remember, it was the Conservative Party that voted her in over Rishi Sunak, uh, who was the other frontrunner, uh, who lost, well, lost over the, the course of the past few weeks, but it was announced today that Liz Truss would be the leader of the Conservative Party. So she's got to appoint these government ministers, and they have to be good, and they have to get... To the job of running the country. And job one is the economy and trying to do something about it and, and, and to alleviate genuinely the suffering for some of the lower income people, um, the public, who will be struggling. So it will be getting this cabinet together, finding some unity, and then making that government work. All of those are extremely difficult tasks, and she's got to do it right away. There is no time to lose. And before we let you go, Charlie, just a real quick um, recap on what happened exactly to Boris Johnson for our viewers. Yeah, well, I mean, how far can we go back? So <laughs> Boris Johnson, in early July, uh, there were just a number of high-level high resignations, and it had to do with some controversies. Partygate, if you remember, there are parties that were being held at Number 10 Downing Street uh, under um, strict pandemic restrictions that broke the rules. And then the, the straw that broke the camel's back was a, a scandal that had to do with one of his ministers. He said that he hadn't known his previous history. He then had to come out and say he actually did. So he looked as if he was misleading the public. And at that point, so many senior 
uh, ministers within his own cabinet resigned. The 50 or 60 members of his own government resigned. Eventually, he had no choice but to walk the plank himself. Does this mean Boris Johnson is going away? No. Uh, he will probably go on a speech circuit in the United States and elsewhere, as, as he said, to put some uh, hail in the uh, bail bail some hay in the loft to make some money, uh, but he's not going away. He still has his ministership, and he will be, uh, um, he still has membership, and will be an a influential voice within the conservative party. Charlie Daggett, thank you so much for breaking it down. Thank you.